So Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference has come and gone, and we now have an idea of what's coming this fall. Hey guys, Rex here with iDrop News, and today we are taking a look at the iOS 10 beta running on an iPhone, so you know what you can expect later this year. There have been plenty of questions about how committed Apple is to 3D Touch, but the enhancements Apple has slated for iOS 10 indicates the company has no plans of slowing down 3D Touch development. Starting with the lock screen, which is reimagined in iOS 10, 3D Touch is more prevalent than ever. Notifications can now be pressed to reveal more information, along with actions available for the particular notification. In iOS 10, so much can be accomplished without ever needing to leave the lock screen. 3D Touch has been given a boost on the home screen as well. Quick actions, which are the options accessed by pressing on an app icon, now support widgets along with those quick actions. For example, when the reminders icon is pressed, a widget displaying upcoming reminders along with available quick actions are displayed. Although this isn't a completely open Android approach, it's certainly a victory for advocates of iOS widgets on the home screen. Control Center in iOS 10 is also redesigned. 3D Touch options are available for all of the options across the bottom, and the audio controls have been moved over to its own page. This makes Control Center much cleaner and much less cluttered. It was a bit of a surprise, but the Messages app and the upcoming enhancements to iMessage received more stage time during the WWDC keynote than anything else. Apple explained Messages as the most used app on iPhone, and making the messaging experience richer is a primary focus in iOS 10. There is so much new coming to Messages, I can't cover it all here, but here are the highlights. In iOS 10, you can 3D touch the send arrow to reveal what Apple calls bubble effects and full screen effects. Bubble effects include slam, a loud option, gentle, and invisible ink, which hides the message and requires the recipient to swipe across the bubble to see the contents. You can also select the screen option to add a full screen effect to your message. As emojis continue to take over the world, it isn't much of a surprise they will be getting more support in iOS 10. The highlight feature is when you switch to the emoji keyboard, any words in your message able to be switched out for an emoji will become highlighted. The benefit here is saving time spent searching for the right emoji. Additionally, Apple announced an app store for iMessage coming in iOS 10. Now this has tons of potential and will let third-party apps share content, make payments, or do anything else developers can come up with, all without leaving the Messages app. The Photos app is also getting some great new features in iOS 10. Not to be outdone by Google Photos, you will be able to search photos contextually. For example, if you want to look at photos with a beach in them, or a dog, or anything else you can think of, you can simply search for them. Another neat addition is a new tab on the bottom called Memories. My favorite part of the Memories tab is the videos that are automatically created. If you're like me, you have loads of photos and videos that you've never got around to editing or putting together in any kind of a video or slideshow. The Photos app will create short contextual videos and break up photos for you using information from the photos. So here, the app has created sections for me from vacations, uh, photos taken in certain places, and so on. Now, like with every iOS update, there are many small features we will spend the next year or two discovering, but here are a few additional ones that stood out to me. First, the Music app will receive a much-needed refresh in iOS 10. Since the release of Apple Music, the app has been bloated and confusing. Deciphering between music you own and Apple Music is difficult, and features like Connected receive way too much attention. The redesign will make the app much cleaner and easier to navigate. Also, it should be no surprise that Siri will be getting an update in iOS 10, but this year's update could be the biggest since Siri was released. After years of hoping, Apple has finally released a Siri SDK allowing developers to incorporate Siri into their third-party apps. 
Of course, the potential for this feature is endless. For the first time, you will be able to command Siri to perform actions using third-party apps rather than being limited to Apple's built-in apps. So since the release of the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, there has been a number of ironic complaints surrounding the updated Touch ID sensor. The complaint is that it's too fast, and it makes it impossible to view notifications. Apple has taken notice and added a new feature called Raise to Wake in iOS 10. If you have an Apple Watch, you are already familiar with this concept. So to make it easier to check notifications, you will be able to simply raise your iPhone to turn on the screen. Well, all right, guys, that does it for this one. I hope this gives you an idea of what you can expect in iOS 10 coming this fall. Obviously, there are many other features headed to your iPhone later this year. So as always, keep it locked right here to iDrop News for more coverage, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Later. Thank you.